In his book, Civilization and Its Discontents, Sigmund Freud examines individual human happiness in the context of modern civilization. One of the topics that he touches on within this conversation is religion. Freud attempts to discover the true origins of religion and the role that it plays in the life of the individual. This lecture will give an overview of the ideas about religion that Freud establishes and some possible criticisms of those ideas. So let's get started. So Freud starts off by analyzing the claim that the concept of God and religion originates from the feeling of infinity or a sense of oneness with the universe. And Freud uses these terms pretty interchangeably throughout the book. He often uses eternity or an oceanic feeling, and they all mean pretty much the same thing. But this sensation, according to Freud, is typically only felt by infants who are unable to distinguish their ego or their sense of oneself from an outside object. As people age and mature, this feeling disappears and they realize that the world is much larger than their own experience. As you can see on the screen, Freud puts it, Originally, the ego includes everything. Later, it separates off an external world from itself. Freud then wonders how people are able to continue to have this oceanic feeling even into their adult years, and how this can still be a good explanation for the origin of God. He eventually comes up with the possibility that people long to return to this infantile feeling, which is where the abstract concepts of eternity and thus religion originate. So it's not the feeling itself so much as the desire to return to that infantile state. But Freud ends up actually rejecting this possibility in favor of the argument that religion is the result of an infantile regression towards the desire for protection from one's father. And this is really a huge idea from Freud because it also accounts for why so many religions tend to depict their god as an exalted father figure and protector. But the key thing here is that Freud has come up with an alternative explanation for the origin of God, which kind of undermines the original argument that he was analyzing. And Freud postulates that the concepts of infinity and eternity were simply assigned to religion later on. At the beginning of chapter 2, Freud opens with a description of how the common man views religion. This is covered in more depth in his book, The Future of an Illusion. But here Freud claims that humans use religion as both a way to curtail suffering by offering eternal happiness in the future and to describe and understand their environment. As stated earlier, humans tend to depict their God as a protective father, which is explained by childhood emotions. Freud believes that this image, as well as the claims that religion makes, are completely unrealistic and even shameful. As you can see on the screen, Freud is extremely critical of religion and the fact that so many people continue to believe in it. He even references the philosophers who describe God as a feeling of eternity and claims that this is simply an effort to rescue their God. This is of course strongly related to the Tillichian model for faith as well as Descartes' argument for the existence of God, where he argues that humans, because humans are able to conceptualize eternity, there must be an eternal being, namely God. Freud completely throws these ideas to the side by claiming that he has come up with an alternative explanation for the origin of religion, namely the infantile desire for protection from one's father. Freud then goes on to classify religion within the context of how humans deal with their natural unhappiness. According to Freud, there are three ways of dealing with suffering, deflections, substitutive measures, and intoxication. Freud eventually concludes that religion is basically a subset of the second method, substitutive measures, in which the individual conjures up an imaginary world where it is easier to deal with unhappiness. Freud notes that if an individual does this, they are classified as delusional or paranoid. Religion is therefore a social way of escaping reality so as to pr provide validation for the individual. Freud called religion a mass delusion and believe it to be one of the worst ways of dealing with unhappiness. This is primarily due to religion's restrictive nature because religion claims to be the only viable way to deal with displeasure. Freud believes that a mix of the palliative measures is the best approach and disagrees with religion's outlook. Freud also notes that religion is not perfect and cannot guarantee happiness for everyone. 
Whether or not you agree with Freud's view on religion largely depends on whether or not you agree with his psychoanalytic approach. Does the fact that as a child you may have longed for your father's protection impact how you view God into your adult years? Freud believes this to be a fact, but perhaps there's something else going on. Another point of contention is how Freud treats the philosophers and theologians who try to find God as more of an abstract idea rather than a father. Among these philosophers are Tillich and Descartes. Freud thinks that these philosophers are simply trying to rescue their God, which may not give their argument a fair chance. Freud mostly criticizes their motives rather than their arguments. For example, Descartes argues that the fact that humans are able to somehow perceive and conceptualize infinity is compelling evidence for the existence of an eternal God. Regardless of Descartes' motives, this argument is actually quite powerful and deserves more consideration. An issue that I had with Freud's conversation about religion is that, for the most part, he only talked about Western monotheistic religions. Eastern practices, such as Buddhism and Taoism, are completely different from the Abrahamic traditions and deserve to be brought up when discussing religion. Freud does briefly mention Buddhism during his discussion on the various palliative measures, but he fails to bring it into the larger religion conversation going on. These are just a few possible criticisms of Freud's analysis of religion, but there are many more. For your assignment on Monday, I would like you to consider what issues you have with Freud's analysis or what you agree with. Make a list and be ready to share and debate your points.